Well, listen to me, and never forget it. Crime is a sucker's road, and those who travel it wind up in the gut of the prison of the grave. There's no other end, but they never learn. It was ugly from the start this time. Vicious blackmail that mushroomed into murder and all because a wild artist on a hilltop. A man in a wheelchair and a red-haired manicurist were held too tight together by one small ebony link. From the pen of Raymond Chandler, outstanding author of mystery, comes his most famous character and crime's most deadly enemy as we present The Adventures of Philip Marlowe. Now, with Gerald Moore, starred as Philip Marlowe, we bring you tonight's exciting story, The Ebony Link. I spent a dismal day tracking down another wise guy. He thought he could see fast money over the sights of a forty-five, but it ended up like they all do. He was flat on his face in an alley, his life dripping into a sewer. It was what he deserved, and the only feeling I got from it was that I wanted a bath bad. So I went home, but when I stepped out of the elevator and started down the hall, I knew I'd have to postpone it. Because leaning on my doorbell was a redhead who looked very good from a distance. But she lost ground with every step I took. Because the closer I got, the more I saw of a mouth shaped by indecision. Of eyes that were nothing but mascarid caginess and shallow green. And flashy clothes that carried the kind of bargain basement label you can't tear off. Good evening. Looking for me? Yeah, you're a private detective named Marlowe. I am. Come on in. Have a chair, Miss... Uh, uh, Johnson, thanks. What's your difficulty, Miss Johnson? Oh, it's not me. It's my sister up in Santa Barbara. Can you go there right away, 812 Seaview Road? Uh, maybe you should tell me what it's all about, huh? Well... She loaned a gentleman friend of hers some money. Okay, and... okay. That's enough of the sister act, baby. What's the gag? Gag? Why, I, I don't think I understand. Number one, there's no 812 on Seaview Road. It runs into the ocean at the 600 block. I know. I used to live there. But, but number I... two, when picking a phony name, Johnson is the second most popular in the book. Yeah, but... And I... number three, baby, me hiring out as a patsy of any kind is lousy for my business. So you better... Pick him up. Oh, no. I mean it. And I'll shoot if you follow me. Okay, kid. Just don't slam the door on your way out. She backed out fast, pulling the door closed as she went. And I gave her five seconds head start and then looked in time to see the top of her hat disappearing down the stairs. But before I could follow her, the elevator gate slid open and a dapper man with a square face I'd seen somewhere before hailed me. Certainly glad I found you, sir. Remember me? Ramsey, Mr. Ivan Pack's chauffeur. Oh, yeah. He wants to see you, sir. Says it's very urgent. Yeah, but I... Well... Okay, Ramsey. Where's Mr. Pike now? Waiting downstairs in the car, sir. I'll oh. show you. We tried your office first, but it was locked. We were afraid you might have gone out of town. You aren't going, I hope. Uh, no, no, but it was close. By the way, how is Mr. Pike these days? Still confined to his wheelchair? Yes, sir. But he gets around fairly well with me to help him, of course. Mm -hmm. What's the matter, Mr. Marlowe? Looking for someone? Not exactly, Ramsey. Chances are she ducked out the back way and still running. Oh, I beg your pardon, sir. This way, Mr. Marlowe. Here we are. Uh, hello, Ivan. Get in, Marlowe. Thank goodness we found you. Well, just, just drive around the block, Ramsey. Yes. He said it was urgent. Is it really that bad? Yes, it is. Roll up the glass there, Marlowe. It's best if even Ramsey doesn't hear this. Okay. That's it. Now, Marlowe, I'm being blackmailed again. Huh? It happened six months ago for 10000 This time it's 50000 Brother... What have they got on you, Evan? What's the lever? The lever is that I happen to love my wife, Leona. But I happen to feel it's my duty as a husband to protect her reputation and shield her from heartbreak. I still don't get it. Marlo, I tell you this because you're the only person I can trust. Leona spent a year in prison back east when she was a kid. But that's nothing to be ashamed of all your life. I know, I know. Take it easy. I'm, I'm sorry. Bluntly, I can't afford to throw that much money away. On the other hand, if I don't pay, they threaten to expose Leona as a jailbird. She couldn't stand that, Marla. Mm -hmm. I know her. She ran away the first time this happened. She said she wouldn't be that kind of burden to me. If she finds out about this new demand, she may do something even more desperate. Blackmail's always tough. Who's doing it? I don't know. It's more, all we have to go on is this letter. Let's see. Here. It's got an L.A. postmark. The stationery is a high grade that doesn't match that cheap envelope. Mm -hmm. The top of the page has been cut off, see? Yeah. Strange backhand, too, huh? It... 
Hey, this demands a payoff by 12.30 tonight. Why didn't you give me more time? I just got the letter this afternoon. Yeah. Look, Marlowe, I realize what you're up against. Try, try, will you? Find out who wrote that letter. I have two alternatives. Pay him, kill him. Well, I'm no killer. I'll pay if I have to. But maybe, with luck and your help, we can find a soft spot in his armor. What do you say? Well, I'll try. Don't take any bets, Ivan. Ivan said he'd be in his office all night, then dropped me off at home where I got in my own car, pulled around a big gray sedan in the driveway, and hauled a small sample of the blackmail stationery into the police lab. There I got a break. The boys had it classified in 30 minutes, and after another 30, handed me the names of two business houses and 12 hotels in the city that used it. Too many to check in the time allowed, so I called Ivan Pack and started down the list. He stopped me at the fourth hotel, which was the Beverly Crest, with the word that his wife, Leona, had spent a lot of time and money shopping in the hotel's exclusive arcade. So I drove out to the Beverly Crest, watching a big gray sedan in my rearview mirror most of the way. But in the hotel, I killed another hour drawing blanks, even at the writing room blotters. Until, on the way out, I got another break. The beauty shop was closing for the night, and inside, slipping a coat over her manicurist uniform, was a redhead. The same redhead who had tried to sack track me to Santa Barbara. I followed her out of the hotel, and when she got around to the back, I stopped her. What do you want? I got curious about your sister, sister. I don't know what you're talking about. I don't have a sister, and I never saw you before in my That's life. wishful thinking, baby. You can talk here or over a desk at police headquarters, but you're going to talk. Now, which is it? Wait a minute. No coffee. All right. Okay, Marlo, sure. I'll talk. I got a sister in Santa Barbara, all right. She's a mermaid. She comes up once a year to fish for seagulls, and she wanted you to bait the hook. Come on, come on. Straighten it out. You're smack in the middle of a lot of trouble, and it's getting deeper fast. Believe no, me. No, I'm not, wise guy. You're in the middle. In fact, you got trouble right behind you. Stop oh. By the time I got untangled from the ash cans, all I could see was the back of a big gray sedan taking a corner so fast I only caught the last three numbers of his tag. 440. But as I stood up and dusted myself off, I saw something black and shiny. It was a five-sided ebony cufflink. I dropped it in my pocket as I went inside the hotel again. The fiber to a bellhop got me the manicurist's real name, Rhea Fleming. But even a ten-spot failed to raise her address, so I called my client again and tried Rhea's name on him. When that missed, I asked permission to go and see Leona about it. That got me 60 seconds of argument, ten of dead silence, and finally a very reluctant okay from Ivan. Twenty minutes later, I pulled up at 94 Camden Drive, in front of a house sprawling in Spanish that was home to Ivan and Leona Pack, and the delicate dark girl with the shy gray eyes who answered the door was Leona herself. Yes? I'm uh, Philip Marlowe from the Sequoia Credit Adjusters, Mrs. Pack. I'm told you patronize a manicurist, Miss Rhea Fleming at the Beverly Crest Hotel. Why, yes, occasionally. Is, is anything wrong? Oh, no, no, nothing serious at all. Uh, May I come in? Oh, of course. I'd like to ask you a few questions about Miss Fleming. Well, I, I really don't know her very well. Oh, I understand that. But you might know where she lives, for instance, huh? Well, I did happen to drop her off one evening oh? at the corner of Sunset and Mariposa, I think. Oh, won't you sit down, Mr. Oh, Marlowe? thanks. Uh, where did she live before she came to Los Angeles? Well, I, I have no idea. You don't? Huh? Well, do you happen to know if she writes in a heavy, angular backhand? A heavy... A- mm-hmm. Mr. Marlowe? May I see your credentials? Why, of course, if you wish. No, don't bother. It's happened again, hasn't it? Ivan's received another letter, and I'm... Who are you, really? Private detective working for Ivan. Oh, that's a cheap trick, I admit it. But we wanted to keep this from you, Leona. I won't let it happen. Now, wait a minute, wait a minute, listen to me. (laughs) Ivan's doing everything possible to stop this business. Now, give us a chance. You're running away now. It would be the worst thing you could do to him. So terribly unfair, Mother. We're on your side. Don't you understand that? And you're in a position to help us, if you will. Marlo, is it... Is it Rhea Fleming? Well, she's in on it, but not alone. She doesn't have the brains. But whoever is behind it belongs to this ebony cufflink. <coughs> Ever see it before, Leona? Think hard. No. No, I haven't. Oh, it's too bad. Well, do you happen to know anybody who drives a big gray sedan? The, the license number ends in 440. Well, uh, that might be Bruce Morachek. Morachek, who's he? An artist I've been hired to do a portrait of me. Mm-hmm. Pictures and finished yet, it may never be. Bruce is too temperamental and exacting, but 
Why did you ask about him, Marlowe? Yeah, because I've been tailed by a grace of dance since I first started in this mess. Oh, it couldn't be, Bruce. I'm sure of that. Now, well, we'll see. And, Leona, until you hear from me again, promise you won't do anything rash, huh? Where, where are you going now, Marlowe? Puts impression on Rhea Fleming. Her character has all the sterling qualities of mud pie, and I think she'll crack just as easily. So long, Leona. I'll call you. In spite of what Leona had said, I still thought there might be more to Bruce Morachek than ever got on canvas. When I was out of the house and halfway to my car, I knew I'd have a chance to find out because across the street, a door flew open on a big gray sedan. And better than six feet of swarthy but a handsome man clambered out and rushed toward me. It wasn't the lock of black wavy hair that dangled dashingly over one eye, but the fact that his hands were curled into very large fists. It gave me a definite demorous feeling about him, and the closer he got, the more certain I was that I'd have to let him have it first. When he got within reach, I did just that. Ha! And while you're taking that one over, chum, try this. How long have you had on that polo shirt? Speak up. All day. Confound you. But you don't have to knock me down to find that out, you idiot. No, it was faster that way, and I'm not through yet. You've been tagging me all night, and I don't like it. How come? You wouldn't understand. Try me. Come on. I haven't got all much time. All right, all right. Until yesterday, I was working on a portrait of Mrs. Pack. Yeah? She's an exquisite subject, but I, I quit because it, it became impossible. Mm -hmm. She's being so upset by something or someone, she doesn't even look like the same person from one day to the next. And that's supposed to explain why you've been tailing me all over town? I told you you wouldn't understand. A portrait artist is not only a painter. He isn't, huh? He must be a psychologist, a doctor, mm. even even a detective, if necessary, when his subject's beauty is being destroyed before his eyes. Oh, come on. It's true. Hey. So I followed Mr. Pat to you and you to the Beverly Crest Hotel because you are up to something. I want to know what it is. Mm -hmm. Naturally, it wasn't you who put the slug on me at the hotel, huh? The what? The slug. Slug. Ah, no, no, uh. no. I saw you walk around to the back, but... The time I got there, a car was driving off. I thought you were in it, so I tried to follow, but I lost it. Yeah? And then I came up here. Well, let me tell you something, Morachek, for your own good and your subjects. If you're on the level, go home. And if you're not on the level, brother, you better get out of town while you still can. Good night! I looked back just before I turned the corner, and Morachek was still standing where I'd left him. So I drove out to Sunset and down to Mariposa, where I parked and started walking. And why, it was more than an hour ringing doorbells, interviewing kids, husbands, and homemakers, and running down false leads before I finally found the mailbox labeled Rhea Fleming, Rear, in a brown stucco two blocks south. I hacked my way through the underbrush hugging the front house to a converted guest cottage in the back, numbered 8811. I didn't bother to knock, I just walked in. Hey, darling, I was beginning to think you'd never get... Milo, get out! Get out of here, I'll scream. I scream louder. Who's the boyfriend you're expecting, Rhea? I don't have a boyfriend. It wasn't your grandfather that piled me up at the hotel tonight, baby. It's your last chance. Who was it? I don't seem to recall the incident you refer to, Marlowe. Now, listen, oh. jerk. You're in a rotten blackmailing game right up to your earrings. And what's more, your extortion letter went through the mails. You get that? That's a federal rap. You can't beat it. I'm going to see that you don't because I'm sick and tired of fooling with you. You're too stupid to realize when you're licked. Federal rap, I... I didn't know that, Marlo. Who are you calling? Cops, of course. I'm through. I'm putting you out of circulation right now. No, wait. Don't do that. I, I'll tell you who's with me. Okay. It, it... No, I can't. Rhea, come back here, you fool. No, 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 no. Rhea. Holy smoke. Rhea. Rhea, who was it? Who did this? Gee, I... I didn't think he had go this far. I just didn't realize I... No, I guess you didn't, baby. One down and one to go. In just a moment, the second act of Philip Marlowe. But first... If you like the weather here, cloudy with threats, torrid with action, showers of trouble later tonight and tomorrow, you'll find more of the same on Sundays when Danny Clover and Sam Spade go into action. Danny Clover is the thoroughly human, fast-thinking detective of Broadway is My Beat. And Sam Spade is the, well, who else but the Sam Spade of Dashiell Hammett's fertile, ingenious brain. On most of these same CBS stations tomorrow, you'll find Danny Clover prowling the Great White Way late in the afternoon and Sam Spade on the hunt in the evening. Now with our star, Gerald Moore, we return to the second act of Philip Marlowe and tonight's story, The Ebony Link. Is Rhea 
Fleming's face relaxed in death, the gaping, frightened people who make up every street scene began to gather. And as each newcomer timidly edged forward and then caught his breath at the sight of the dead girl, and in a small, tight voice asked whoever was standing next to him what had happened, only one thought kept running through my mind. The owner's blackmailer and the murderer of Rhea were one and the same. So leaving my card with an old toothless biddy who demanded to know why I was running away before the police arrived, I piled into my car and headed for Ivan Pack's office on La Brea. I pulled to a stop just as a chauffeur named Ramsey darted out of the building and into the family limousine, parked at the curb, and pulled away fast. But since Pack was the man I wanted to see, I dismissed the thought of a not so merry chase, went to the door, and knocked. Five minutes went by before my client wheeled himself out of an inner cubby hole and opened up. And another five while I brought him up to date, blow by blow, the redhead's violent death included. Murdered Marvel? Yeah. And for my money, the noose fits whoever she's working for, who is also the party that dropped me in the alley behind the Beverly Crest Hotel, and this ebony cufflink and doing it. Ever see it before? Why, no, no, I haven't. You sure, Ivan? Sure it wasn't once holding a lot of fancy shirt together for one Mr. Morocek, maybe? Bruce? Well, why him, Marlowe? Because he's been tagging me all night. Say, tell me, Ivan, how well do you know him? I met him about six or seven months ago at my club. I, I don't remember who introduced us. Yeah, well, that fits. The blackmail started just about that time. Now, look, just to make it a little tighter all the way around, you can't recall who recommended him to you as just the right man to paint Leona's picture, can you? No, I can't. Uh But on the other hand, Marlowe, neither can I recall having heard anything bad about him. No. Now, look, you say he's been following you all night. Close enough to do a time step. What are you getting at? Just this. Was he around the place where the girl was killed? Well, to my knowledge, no. But that shouldn't mean too much because the murder happened after we had our little run-in. So he'd naturally be careful about my seeing him. Well. Besides, Ivan, he was going to commit murder, so it's a since you'd arrive and depart from 8811 Mariposa without fanfare. Mariposa? And I, yeah. 8811 Mariposa, Marlowe? Yeah. But that's the address I just saw on a slip of paper in Ramsey's desk. There was a phone number, too. Wait a minute. Your chauffeur's Rhea Fleming's address? Yes. Here, get hold of my wheelchair. Sure. It's that far desk there, just inside that partition. You know, Ivan, when I pulled up outside here, I saw Ramsey leave. You know where he was going? Yes, he was going to dinner. Hmm. Unless he hasn't eaten in five years, I don't think that's where he was going. He lurched from the curb like it was on fire. Here you are, Marlowe. The top drawer on the right. Hold the back. I see it. Yeah. 8811 Mariposa, all right. Phone number and nothing else except... Except this. What did you find, Marlowe? A cufflink, Ivan. Twin to the one in my pocket. And maybe a murderer who isn't named Marachek. You mean Ramsey? Yeah. Oh, no, no. That couldn't be. Why not? Ramsey's been here with me for the past two hours. So you mustn't discount Morachek or anyone else just because of this cufflink and the address. Well, in that case, no. But I can include Ramsey along with the late Miss Fleming as at least one accomplice on what's fast getting to be a very elaborate setup. Ivan, do you know where Morachek lives? Yes, at his studio, Lookout Mountain Road, mm-hmm. just off Laurel Canyon Boulevard. Laurel Canyon. Well, I don't know the exact address, but you ought to be able to get that from Leona. Yeah. Well, I'll get in touch with you later, Ivan. Hello, Leona. Now, listen hard. Yeah. Did Bruce Marachek come up to see you after I left? Yes, he did. What did he say? Well, only that he'd collided with you on the stairs and that he wanted to know who you were, what mm-hmm. business you had with me. Did you tell him? Of course not. I wouldn't tell anybody anything about this. He didn't like that, huh? No, as a matter of fact, that's the reason he went home. Right away? Within five minutes. Yeah. He said he was going back to his studio and he'd be there all night if I needed any protection. But why? Is it because of something you found out at Rhea's place? No, it runs the other way. It's what I didn't find out. She was murdered, Leona. She was... Whoever's blackmailing you, I'm positive. But whether or not that's Marachek, I don't know yet. Now, look, what's the number of his place on Lookout Mountain Road, Leona? Come on, fast. Uh, 173. 173. But Thank you, you and be... goodbye. <laughs> I was 20 minutes wriggling through the thick Hollywood traffic to Laurel Canyon, then another 10 climbing Lookout Mountain Road, which was an abrupt spiral of macadam that belonged in the Alps. So when I parked away from the bay window with Ruth, there was numbered 173 started up through the junior jungle that led to the front door, it was exactly 10 o'clock. And considering the zest of my last meeting with the artist, a good time for me to be careful. So when I knocked on the heavy oak that showed splashes of yellow at the threshold, I did it with the barrel of my 38. When I got no answer, I tried again, louder. It was then that Marachek replied, but not as I had expected, because he was behind me. 
And his greeting was a fist the size of a cannonball coming at the side of my head fast. <coughs> and now, Marlo, I'll take your gun here. And if I have to use it, I will. No doubt. It worked before. Huh? What are you talking about? Come on, Buster. Get off it. Jack like a paint. Let's not waste each other's time. All right. Then inside, Marlo, where we can get to the point fast and in privacy. Go on. All right. The door is not locked, detective. I don't know what you want here, but I'm going to find out, believe me. You can skip the thumbscrews, Rembrandt. I'll make it very plain for you. I want to know why you think you can get away with a double header like blackmailing Leona and murdering your own accomplice. Any comment? Yes, you're either stupid or a raving maniac, Now, Martin. listen, Marlo, No, no, check. you listen to me. Leona Peck is a good friend of mine, Marlo. I'm very fond of her. I'm not going to stand here and be accused of blackmailing her. And I suppose that talk of murder at 8811 Mariposa also offends, huh? It does. And until you mentioned it, Marlo, I didn't even know Leona's trouble was blackmail. And as for a murder, I said that something of a Mariposa, I have been here painting since I last saw you. Which who will swear to? Nobody. Ah. But if you will step over here... You can see that this canvas is fresh, that the paint is still... It was my on. chance. The second he got in front of his canvas, he forgot he was holding my thirty-eight in his hand. And as he talked, he pointed with the barrel like it was a paintbrush. When I was close to him, my right foot was against one leg of the easel. The time was right. Are you satisfied? Not quite! It's a mother check. Now, since I'll also use this gun if I have to, get up. Stand over there against that wall. Come on. You're going to get a chance to tell that story again, Bruce boy, but this time to the police. And I... Hey, hey, Marachek. What? That painting there. That's Leona, right? Huh? Of course that's Leona. Does it look like a battleship? No comment. But also, Marachek, it looks like a lot more, and by that I mean the answer to who's both the blackmailer of Leona and Rhea Fleming's killer. Now I think I know. Apologies and farewell, Buster. You're nothing worse than a sucker. Yeah, but, but Marlo, I don't understand. Where are you going? To Leona's place. Friend Ramsey is due there at the moment, and that may mean murder again. So long, Rembrandt. Once I was off the mountain, back onto Laurel Canyon, then over to Sunset, and pointed toward Beverly Hills and Leona's house on Camden Drive. I kept my right foot heavy on the accelerator, and my mind working just as fast. Because no matter which way I added things, I was still basing a lot on a little. And a few important points shy of figuring the whole deal. Five minutes later, when I was parked and walking toward the door of number 94, nothing was any clearer. But then, it didn't seem to matter because when I glanced in a side window as I reached for the doorbell, I saw Leona sitting alone on the edge of the couch like it was going to blow up any minute. Her face, which was frozen in the half-crazed expression of the condemned man watching his executioner sharpen an axe, told me that Brother Ramsey was already present and probably out of my view with at least a gun in his hand. But since I'd gone this far on what I knew to be a very sorry case, I decided to play a chin out and hand tight over 38 in pocket. Who is it? It's me, Leona Marlo. Oh, one minute, Marlo. I, I look a sight. Yeah, not a bad one, though. <laughs> Hello? Uh, yes. Yes, come in, won't you? I've been expecting you. Yeah. Well, I just left Mora check, Leona. I was wrong about him being your blackmailer, I mean. Of course you were. That's mm. what I tried to tell you on the phone, Phil. What finally convinced you? A picture. Uh, you mind if I sit down? I've been doing a lot of running around tonight. Oh, of course. Mm. What picture, Phil? Hmm? Oh, the one he did of you. I can't say much for it, though. No, it isn't too good, is it? Mm -mm. But... How to tell me the boy genius, wasn't it? Yes, I'm interested. Oh, you should be, Leona. It was a blouse you had on, remember? A white one with cufflinks. Cufflinks? Mm-hmm. Ebony ones, like this. The one I showed you when I was here earlier. One you said you didn't recognize. The one out of the set you must have given Ramsey as a present after Bruce Morachek was through painting your picture. The one that says the blackmailer of Mr. Ivan Pack is you, Mrs. Ivan Pack. No. And you killed Rhea Fleming, too. No, no, you're wrong, Marlowe. Why would I kill Rhea? For the same reason you denied recognizing the cufflink. You didn't want me to get to Ramsey, so oh, no, you killed wrong. Rhea before she could name him no, when I, I was at the cottage. Kill. And then you still couldn't get oh, me no. to Ramsey because if I pressured him enough, I'd have to find out his game was cutting oh, in on no. you because he knew you were blackmailing yourself. I heard enough. You're smart, Marlowe, very smart. But how do you think you're going to prove all this? Oh, answer All me. All right. Ramsey figured you killed his girlfriend, Rhea. We sent him flying up here from no. Ivan's office. No, to demand a bigger cut. Or maybe all of the 50 grand. I don't now know Now that you've graduated from blackmail and murder, I've been waiting and watching You're him wrong, to make a move. Milo, you're but wrong. if he hasn't, Leona, he must be dead. No. Here, in this no, house, probably not. in this room. And that, no, Mrs. Black, you want to explain away. Now, where is he? No. Where, Leona? No. He's 
I called Ivan Pack and told him he wouldn't have to pay the blackmail money and why. There was a long silence before he said goodbye, and I went to police headquarters where an uncomfortable hour and a half went by before homicide was satisfied and Leon had signed a complete confession. So by the time I got over to my client's office on La Brea, where I knew I had to go, it was almost 12.30, the hour originally set for payoff. When I was inside and sitting next to the man in the wheelchair whose watered eyes never left my face, it was exactly that, straight up and down. A little clock in the corner of the room said so. Well, Marlowe, I just saved $50,000, didn't I? Maybe a little more than that, Ivan. Maybe unhappiness for years to come, huh? Yes, yes, I suppose so. Leona wanted two things, Ivan. Your dough and Bruce Morachek. She didn't get either one. The ten grand you paid the first time and the money she was going to get tonight would have been a bait <laughs> to catch a starving artist. But I was wrong about him. He wasn't interested except as an artist. And your chauffeur and your wife's manicurist knew enough between them to try to get a piece of that dough for themselves. Yes, I, I owe you a lot, Marla. Oh. After all, I just said I saved $50,000, didn't I? Even though I lost a wife. Good night, Marla. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Sure. Night, Evan. Outside... The night air was clear, almost cold. It felt good against my face, so when I got to where my car was parked, I didn't get in right away, but stood next to it. Thought about Ivan Pack, the two people he trusted most, his wife and his chauffeur. One already dead, the other soon would be. I reached into my pocket for a cigarette and came out and stayed with a cufflink. The ebony cufflink, jet black clear through. I dropped it into the gutter where it belonged, then got into my car and went home. Adventures of Philip Marlowe, created by Raymond Chandler, star Gerald Moore, and are produced and directed by Norman MacDonald. Script is by Mel Dinelli, Robert Mitchell, and Gene Levitt. Featured in the cast were Edgar Barrier, Gene Bates, Larry Dobkin, Georgia Ellis, and Ron Brogan. The special music is by Richard Orant. Be sure and be with us again next week when Philip Marlowe says... I was hired to find a thief, and I did. A thousand miles from home. But first I found a hammy Othello, a lush with a luger, and a fresh corpse in the closet. All because the only woman in sight wouldn't play fair. There's gold in them trills when just a little bit later tonight, Sing It Again comes along, offering a grand prize of $52,000 to some lucky CBS listener. Phone calls will be going out to listeners from coast to coast asking for answers to the merry, tuneful riddle songs, which, if you solve one correctly, gives you a chance at the fabulous Phantom Voice Award. Tonight, it's 27000 in wonderful prizes if you can tell who the Phantom is, plus 25000 in cash if you can answer one more question about him. So stay tuned to CBS for Sing It Again, which comes along later tonight, and for Gangbusters, which follows immediately over most of these same CBS network stations. This is Roy Rowan speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>